All right, folks, we're coming over here to the Apple Store. It's called the Power Max Center. Folks, we're doing an unboxing of the iPhone 12 mini here in the Power Max Store. Oh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep, that's what we're going with. All right, man. Go to work. Go ahead. Beautiful. All right, cool. And we just got the the, uh, the cable. It does not come with the with the charger. You need to use one of your old chargers. Folks, this thing is so much smaller than the iPhone 8 Plus. And I'll talk about this in depth, but this thing just feels so much better in your hand. It's gonna be so much easier to hold and video from. This is the glass we went with. It's the OtterBox uh, Alpha Glass. The case I went with was is the OtterBox Commuter. Uh, luckily they have one for the iPhone 12 mini. All right, beautiful. All right, folks, how's everybody doing? So I just want to talk about the new camera that I picked up, the wine. Uh, I went with it. You know, a lot of things on here on YouTube, people want to talk about the cameras and the videography and you know, what frame range you're shooting in and all that good stuff. Uh, for this video here, I'm just shooting on, a, on an iPad 4K30. So don't judge the new camera based on this video. The first half of this video was shot on an iPhone 8 Plus. You can see that uh, the 8 Plus has, has seen its better days, struggling on uh, stabilization. And, you know, it's just older camera, older technology, same with this iPad. But I wanted to get the video done, and sometimes simplicity is better than setting up the big camera and all the proper lighting and all that. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, video to show you. This is my new camera here. Uh, this is going to be my hard to say primary camera you, know, you talk about your a camera your b camera whatever folks most of the time your phone because it's always in your pocket is your primary camera it's whatever you got in your hand right so what what i figured out you kind of go through this cycle in, in youtube right I mean, you don't need a special camera to run a youtube channel you really don't you know, if you want to start YouTube and you're thinking about it, all you got to do is pull the phone out of your pocket, hit record on that phone's app, do some editing in a, in a free editing uh, app such as iMovie. You know, you can take video on an iPhone, edit on an iPhone, upload on an iPhone, or, or any, any cell phone, and start your YouTube channel. So if you're thinking about, oh, I gotta buy camera equipment, I gotta buy this, I gotta do this. You're just making excuses. Because most of the time, people don't care, at least these days, and as much on YouTube, they don't care what camera you're using. They don't care that if you're shooting in 1080 or 4K, most of the time they're watching it on a mobile device, they're, they can't tell the difference anyhow. You know, you need to make sure you got good audio, halfway decent video, and and not too shaky, and, and you're good to go. Now, so again, if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, pull your cell phone out, start making YouTube videos, and then go from there. But you go through the cycle. You start out with your cell phone, and you're like, okay, I need to buy better camera equipment. And for certain situations, you do. This big camera behind me is a champion. It, it uh... It will shoot 4K 30 all day long in the heat in the tropics. It will never shut down. It will never overheat. It's got a 10 or 12 time optical zoom on it. I can zoom in the clarity. It is just absolutely wonderful. It is a great camera. The audio is great with a you know a little external mic or wireless mics. But you see how big that damn thing is. Okay, imagine wagging that thing around everywhere you go. That's the problem. Number one, it's heavy. Number two, everywhere you go, you're going to create a scene. You're going to create a stir. Hey, what's this guy doing? You know, people will stop and watch what you're doing. So if, if I'm carrying that camera around, filming with that camera, it's like I'm shooting a movie on, you know, the side of the street and it attracts a crowd. Why? Because it's a big old camera, right? What's this guy doing? 
people react differently to bigger cameras. If you go into certain places, they'll tell you, sir, there's no filming in here, or did you get a permit to film? You know, even, even here in the Philippines, if you, you know, you go to a, a retail shop, or uh, not a convenience store, you, you go to a shopping center, a lot of times they'll tell you you can't film in here because they're selling counterfeit goods. Let's just call it the way it is. But if you're walking around with a cell phone, you know, people don't know if you're making uh, phone calls or you're, you're FaceTiming with somebody. They, they don't know, so they're not as quick. Now, I have said this many times before, you can walk around and film like this, Facebook style, all day long. But the minute you turn that phone and landscape, people will jump on you. Because, oh shit, this guy's a YouTube guy. It's, uh, it's funny, but... Uh, beautiful wife coming in here, messing up my video. Baby, you're so beautiful. Uh, well, can I finish my, let me finish my video here first. Thanks for the interruption though. Wait up. So, there's a lot of pros and cons for every camera that you pick up, right? But that thing right there is great if I'm going camping, I'm at the beach, you know, if I went to Disneyland or places like that where everybody's carrying a camera, everybody's you know, into photography, videography, what have you, and it doesn't raise any flags. But if I'm trying to walk down a street in, in an area that's not a tourist area, and you're carrying a big camera, it just creates a lot of, it brings a lot of attention to yourself, people react differently, and it's heavy. So I went through different camera systems. I went through uh, a GoPro, I swore when I bought my first GoPro, I think GoPro four years ago, that I would never touch a GoPro again. They're buggy, they're prone to lock up, they've got glitches, every one of them does. When that camera works, it's a great camera. When it works, and it'll work about 75, 80% of the time, the other 20% you're fighting with the GoPro. Um, so I, I burn up a GoPro Hero 8, We've got some great footage, great audio, but the bricking issues, the the glitches, I, I, I don't, I, I'm never going back to GoPro unless they fix the reliability issue of their product. I don't care if they ever le release another camera. The GoPro Hero 8 shoots great video, great audio. That's why I went with it. It, it, it trumps the audio. Now I, I don't have a nine, so I can't intelligently speak about the nine. But the GoPro 8's audio trumped uh, everything from the you know, cell phones at the time to the, the Osmo Action to just any other camera. And the audio is more important than the video. That's why I went with the Hero 8. If GoPro would just stop what they're doing, stop developing new shit, take the GoPro 8 or the GoPro 9. Take the GoPro 8 and make that thing 100% reliable you know, like most cameras are, when you push the button, it records, and it doesn't glitch, and it doesn't overheat, and it doesn't brick, and all these other things. If GoPro would take the Hero 8 and make it reliable, they would own the market, because it's a great product. The reason GoPro, uh, you just can't trust it. There it is. I can't trust my GoPro. Not buying any more GoPro, GoPro products, GoPro products unless they fix the reliability issue uh, my DJ, DJI Osmo Pocket great little camera shitty audio um, they came out with the Osmo Pocket 2 and have fixed the audio issue that's a great product uh, my buddy has one that's a great product but you know it's, it's not waterproof it's another piece of gear to carry around it's a little bit more complicated um, but but otherwise a great product. My DJI never let me down. When I hit that record button, the damn thing went to work and never failed me. So I went through those two camera systems, great stabilization. Um, but again, every time you invest in a new camera, you invest in a new ecosystem with accessories, gear, batteries, you name it, and you just start collecting more and more and more crap to the point that you have so much crap that you can't be expeditionary, you can't carry it around again. 
Uh, there was a time, you know, a couple years ago before I had the kids and kind of, uh, you know, back when I was backpacking around, folks, all I carried was that iPhone 8 Plus. I think before that I had an SE. I was making videos on my iPhone. I was editing on my iPhone and uploading on my iPhone, and I was just fine. I had a MacBook Air, and I had an iPhone. And I had a backpack and an Indiana gear bag, and I went everywhere like that. Didn't have a whole lot of gear, didn't have a whole lot of weight. Life was perfect. I started buying camera gear, and now I've started complicating my life. Everywhere I go, I have to lug around this camera gear. Uh, my kit gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not getting rid of that camera, because when I want to set that thing up and make stellar video, that thing's a gem. I'd love to have the Sony a7S III. I think that's the best camera on the market. Uh, you know, in its, uh, I don't even say in its price point. I've done a lot of research. If you're looking for a really pro camera, you're not gonna beat the Sony a7S III. And so I contemplated getting that camera. And I said, look, for walking around, doing walking tours, doing everyday videos, that is not really gonna help me any more than the camera system that I already have. And now I'd be, you know, another $6,000 in the camera gear. So after all this research, I said, you know what, what was the most simple workflow and camera system uh, that I've ever had and ever worked with and it boiled down to my cell phone which I'm an Apple guy, I'm an iPhone dude so I said that's it let me take a look at the iPhone and folks it's changed so much from the 8 plus which is shaky as hell that the iPhone is almost if not on par with GoPro stabilization with DJI Osmo action stabilization maybe they got a little tick better and you know they're easier to mount because of the mounts and stuff but this right here for me there's no need for a gimbal there's no need for an action cam this thing has developed so far from an iPhone 8 Plus um, that there's no reason to buy any other camera system this thing is good enough on the stabilization now look the low light that's a different story it has come a long way but you're not going to beat a camera with a one inch sensor or a full frame so low light uh, if i do any low light shooting or you know, maybe shoot a concert if they ever come back around it'd be worth taking a big camera for the nighttime shots but everyday life you're not going to beat this camera here which is always in your hand always in your pocket stabilization is great the audio is pretty damn good and for my audio all i did was buy this uh we call this an i rig i bought that i rig lapel mic uh, i don't know it was 40 50 bucks it's not too expensive and that way you know you can turn your head and point the camera in any direction you still have good audio you're not trying to speak into the microphone so to speak so a 50 dollar microphone which will fit in your pocket and some type of little Bluetooth shutter. Um, you don't have to have that. But now, now you're a walking film studio and it fits in your pocket. So out of simplicity, now, and let's back up. If you go out and film and you come in, what's the first thing you gotta do with the with other camera? You gotta pop the memory card out. Uh, you gotta pop the memory card in. You gotta drag the footage over, yada, yada, yada. It's more steps in your workflow. What I do with this thing is film, edit, upload, boom, I'm done. When I'm done, I'll hit upload to Google Drive. I never have to fill, uh, fool around with memory cards or anything of that nature. If I want to edit on, say, Final Cut Pro and a MacBook, I just airdrop it. It's push, pushing buttons and boom, it's there uh, in a reasonable amount of time on the MacBook Pro or the iPad Pro. I don't have to plug cables in, I don't have to deal with memory cards, I don't deal with none of that crap. Uh, so the workflow is much easier. Battery life. Okay. Um, the iPhone Mini is a smaller phone, 
therefore it has a smaller battery, therefore it has less battery life. Folks, I got, a, I got three 20,000 milliamp power banks and I paid, I don't know, 40 bucks each for those. So, so for a hundred and something bucks, I got enough power to power this damn phone for days. Um, so I think arguing about battery life on a cell phone these days because power banks are so cheap and uh, for me it was a moot point. I just throw a power bank in my bag uh, and, and roll out. Why did I go with the iPhone 12 mini versus the Pros? Okay. I didn't want a big phone anymore. That big ass phone, it doesn't fit in your pocket very well. You know, it's, it's a two-handed operation. Uh, unless you have really big hands, it's kind of an awkward grip. And when you look at the specs between the Mini, the 12, the, the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max, the specs don't differ that much. Now one thing that I didn't realize, but I, I think it's gonna be a moot point, is from what I understand, this has four megs of RAM, the Pro Max has six megs of RAM. This will shoot Dolby Vision HDR up to 30 frames per second only. Where the Pros will shoot Dolby Vision HDR up to 4K 60. I didn't know that until after I had already bought it. But looking at the HDR footage, I don't think I'm gonna shoot HDR. Uh, at least initially. Maybe once the iPhone 13 comes out, maybe I'll take another look at the HDR, but I'm just, right now I'm not impressed by it. Now I did notice that like on my TV, when there's an HDR video come up, it shows up in the right hand corner and now YouTube is showing HDR. I don't know if that's gonna help you with the algorithm or people actually wanna look for that. Oh, it's an HDR video. I don't think so, but it seems like the HDR is too bright. It's just a little bit blown out. Uh, so, so for me, what I'm going to shoot now is 4K60 without the Dolby Vision HDR. Why am I shooting 4K60 and not 30 and 24? Okay. There's a couple reasons. I like the film look. I like the cinematic look of 24 frames per second, which most you know, our movies are shot in that we're used to. 30 is smoother, so I think for the average YouTuber, for me, I would shoot in 30 instead of 24. I think 30 is like um, the best thing for YouTube. There's a couple of reasons that I like shooting 60 frames. Well, there's one, when, when you're doing fast panning or whatever, and you're shooting 60, you can still hit the space bar and pause and read the signs. Now, yeah, I'm shooting video, I'm not shooting still photography. But if I'm walking down the road and somebody wants to read a menu sign that I'm walking by, if you hit pause at 60 frames per second, typically you can read that whole sign. 24, you got the motion blur. A lot of times you can't read the sign. 30, it's kind of a toss up. So a lot of what I'm doing, I don't consider it just filmmaking. I consider it, you know, uh, it's a mini documentary. You know, if I'm walking down the street at this point in time of these lockdowns, people can go back years from now and see what was happening, right? So I, I think it's important that people be able to read the signs. With 60 frames per second in my experience, you can hit that pause at space bar. Again, I realize we're shooting film, we're shooting video, we're not shooting photos, but you see my point. You can hit the space bar, you can read all those signs. And so it's like for the historical record but I still like 24 frames per second. That's the movie look. It looks better produced. It looks more professional. It looks cinematic. I got it. But for me, I feel like I'm losing, uh, I'm losing out on some of the historical value capturing this moment in history uh, for future reference if I don't shoot 60. So, I'm shooting 4K 60. The other reason is this. I bought it, I, I, and I didn't know this because I haven't bought a new TV in probably a decade until I bought this LG TV. It's LG 4K, it's a great TV. 
And what I realized was when I first started watching videos, it's like all the videos were in 60 frames per second, even the movies. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? You know, this don't look like a movie. This looks like I'm shooting 60 frames and I'm, I'm supposed to be watching a film. The TV by default came with what's called, and I may screw it up, I think it's called True Motion or uh, whatever it is, but the, the default setting, the TV basically takes, say, a 24 frame or a 30 frame, and it fills in the gaps and makes it look like you shot that film in 60 frames per second. I had to Google it and go into that menu system to turn that crap off where your movies will go back to looking at like movies and not looking like they were shot in 60 frames per second. So I got to thinking, I said, well, does the average person who's buying a new TV, I think my generation, of course, my generation and older, of course, we're gonna recognize it and say, hey, that's something that's not right, that doesn't look right. But say the new generation who are used to uh, playing their video games in 60 frames per second, they buy a new TV and it takes, you know, the movie Star Wars and makes it look like it's 60 frames. Are they necessarily going to say, oh, wait a minute, i got to turn that shit off. And go down there and turn it off where the video will look like the frame rate it was shot in. So if the, if the movie is shot in 24, if it's uh, uh, you know shot in 30, that's what it's going to display. But if you don't turn off that default setting, at least on my TV, every video that you see has that. I think it's called true motion. It's some type of something motion. You know what? Boom. There it is on the video. I just looked it up. So if everybody's buying new TVs that come with this default setting, they're watching all my videos and your videos by default in what appears to be 60 frames per second. So if you can't beat them, join them. I was like, that's just another reason I'm gonna shoot 460 for now, 4K60. So you'll see the different look, you'll see the clarity, should be able to hit the space bar and read a menu or read a sign that I walk past. And you can let me know in the comments what you think about that. Um, but you have to look at it too in the YouTube business, are we producing videos? Are we producing short films? Are we producing movies? Or are we producing documentaries? Um, I mean, it's all subjective. It's all an opinion. It's all it's all an opinion. So anyhow, this is what I'm going to be using. This is what I'm going to be shooting on: iPhone 12 Mini, 4K 60 frames, no HDR. All the thumbnails that come from this device. The audio, not all the time, but I'd say majority of the time, would you just be this little iRig mic. And the good thing about this is you can plug two mics into this. So you can do like an interview setup or you can be wearing one mic, your the person or your lady next to you can be wearing a microphone and uh, you get two audio sources going into the iPhone now it's just going to automatically combine it into one channel you, you can't separate the channels from what I understand but there, there you go folks I, I went with this it's smaller it's pretty much the same specs as the pros uh, I couldn't tell the difference in my research and I saved a ton of money it's almost what half the cost of an iP iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max but the jury's still out and the other thing too is if for some reason I do feel like I need to upgrade to the 12 Pro Max, I'll just give this to uh, wife number one there and she's got a cute little phone. She's already trying to steal it from me. So eventually, eventually uh, she'll get a new phone like this or uh, if I have to go with, with the Pro, I'll just give her this one. Everybody's happy. So again, this video is not shot on the iPhone 12, it shot on the, the, the iPad and the, and the older phones. But any video you see from here on out predominantly is going to be shot on this little phone and we'll see can we make it. Can I run my uh, my YouTube channel on nothing but an iPhone? The, the answer is yes. I mean you need a laptop for some of the back end stuff but can I basically go out, film, edit, upload, 
throw a copy up on uh, Google Drive, and then put the phone down and say, all right, you know, well, mission accomplished. And the answer is yes. But, and that's what I'm going to do. Folks, hopefully uh, you got something out of this video. Yeah, it's a tech talk. But if you're considering buying another camera to make YouTube videos, and you already have anything, I would say, from the iPhone X to iPhone 10 forward, just, uh, just use that. If you have an iPhone 8 or older, yeah, because the stabilization is not that great. Yeah, go ahead and up, you, you might want to upgrade to a to a newer phone. But if you have an iPhone X forward, folks, just use that if you're just starting out your YouTube channel. No need to go out and buy any any other gear until you film 20, 30 videos on your phone and figure out if you want to be a YouTube guy or gal. Then you go out and invest in gear, but realize that every camera system you buy more shit to lug around, more shit to learn, uh, your kit gets heavier, it gets more complicated about what you should take with you. It's rare. Meow. Doesn't that look like a cat? <laughs> people don't, I don't think people see it, but I don't know, you got the two eyes and the nose. Meow. It's made a few people laugh. Plus, this is a lot more intimidating or, excuse me, this is not intimidating. You stick a big camera like that in somebody's face, it's intimidating. They get shy, especially around here. All right, folks, if you're not a subscriber on my channel, bottom right-hand corner of your screen, hit that overstay road sign. Ring the bell. Yo, Adrian! And get on board our channel. I'll see you fine, folks, on the next one. And let me know what you think about the, the upcoming footage on all the new videos with the uh, iPhone 12 Mini. Peace out.